Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, pretty girl tells us to not talk, so we make sure to minimize all interactions with her, and the lack of attention begins to choke her like a fish out of water. The second story, director made us follow our colleagues and report, but we did not set anyone up. The third story, boss did not turn off his phone at my request and was fired for it. Today's first story is, no talking, yes ma'am. Context to start, I was doing some temp work at the time and got sent to the Pandora site, aka one of Google's industrial places. My job along with like 13 other temp workers were to rip some batteries out of these metal containers for recycling. That was it, it was just labor intensive from how many totes that needed to be processed. And our team did well. We managed to streamline the process, and we're going fast enough that we were outpacing the amount of batteries Google was sending via trucks. The big boss was bragging to us about it, and then he was excited to have a team that's doing good and fast work. He looks good, we look good, it's all fine and dandy. Now the thing about Google is that they are paranoid as hell. They have security checkpoints, they scan your retinas, they have metal scanners, all those goodies. Part of their security includes having multiple supervisors. If I remember, we had the big boss and his three underlings that were our supervisors. They had one hanging around at all times, but they would rotate and go off doing whatever. They would escort us to our lunches or around the site in groups of four, usually because we had smokers and non-smokers for our breaks, so they would separate us. One of the things we were informed before our work there was to always be busy. They didn't care if it was sweeping the floor, wiping a table that's been spit-shined already or sweeping some more. The temp agency just wants you to always be looking busy even if it serves no purpose. Now that we have the context, we'll move on to the incident itself. Now enters one of those three underlings. We'll call her Power Tripping Bimbo, or PTB for short. I mentioned our crew was just absolutely powering through our battery units, so in the third week we're super ahead of schedule and lunch is about to come up. One of the other supervisors tells us to wrap it up because he has to make sure we don't hurt ourselves while we put away gear and batteries, and then he can escort the first group to lunch and he really wants to go to lunch. PTB, however, is in the side office out of sight, doing lord knows what, and we have to wait about 5 minutes before we can go to lunch, since we're waiting on her to escort us. So what do we do while waiting 5 minutes before lunch, with all our gear put away, and the floors being swept for the 20th time that day? The four of us chat a bit to kill time. We figure we did well enough to warrant this. This was apparently our mistake. This lady came out and when she saw us chatting, it was like as if we had spit in her morning coffee and called her a W. She power stomps over to us and starts screeching, like we were about to get her fired for chatting while we were waiting on her. We try to explain to her that the other supervisor told us to put our gear away and said she would be out in a minute, but she was not having any of that back talk. No man, we were irresponsible lazy workers who should be grateful we even got these temp jobs that could turn into real jobs. Spoiler, they didn't and wouldn't have anyway. They just say that to try to get you to work harder in hopes of getting moved into a permanent position. Some more context, most of the temp team were men with one woman. This particular escort group was all men however, and PTB was an attractive blonde girl that looked like maybe high 20s in terms of age. Her stepfather was also the big boss, so she got her position because of the combination of the two factors. Basically, she told us we were supposed to be working, stop talking, we're not getting paid to talk. And so that's exactly what we did. Our little 5 minute walk to lunch we did not say a thing to her or talk at all. Before this, in the previous three weeks, the group had talked to her all the time, and heck, a couple even flirted with her, but now, all the men were not talking to this pretty girl. She did not like that. I'm guessing she was used to adoration and attention, and suddenly this group of men wouldn't even look at her. All we said was yes ma'am and no ma'am whenever she talked to us, and it didn't stop there. We didn't talk or even look at her during the breaks, any other lunches, during the start or end of our shifts, or when she was the one supervising us during our usual work. We spread the word about her while she wasn't watching us to our fellow temp workers, and they all got in all this because they didn't want to deal with that nonsense either. This goes on for about two more weeks and she cannot stand it. At some point she says, I don't like being a bee, but I'll do it if I have to, and most of us reply yes ma'am and continue with our worker break. Man, she was just livid and knew she could not be at us directly since we weren't doing anything or saying anything technically wrong while on her watch. Eventually, she complains to Big Boss and a few days later, she's no longer supervising us or even on the site any longer. Big Boss didn't say anything, but another supervisor who we were buddies with let us know what happened. We found out that Big Boss liked our crew a lot and didn't want to deal with PTB's BS this time 
and chose to transfer her away so our crew could continue to work in peace and keep pumping out those numbers. That was extremely satisfying to know he valued our work a lot more than her stupidity. The second story is, What? I can't hear you. I started a brand new job at a resort somewhere USA. I look at the reviews and they have some dire warnings, but I worked in some pretty wild places before. So I sign up prepared. I don't expect to stay for long. I show up to work as a maintenance man. My new boss gives me a tour and a radio. He calls me on this radio. I call him back. I held the button for maybe three seconds before I started speaking. He didn't answer, so I called again. Nothing. Well, later he confronts me and tells me that he hasn't heard me respond to the radio. So I tell him that I called. He told me to hold the button down for one second before speaking. From here on out, I knew this would be a long job. Later that day, he calls on the radio again. So I hold the button down for one second instead of the three I did before, and I hear his radio sound, shh, shh, like he just pushed the button down and lifted it without talking. I respond again. Again, his radio sounds, shh, shh. We tag back and forth like this for nine times. He was peeved, but I was already enjoying my first day. Every morning to date for four months now, he gets on his radio and makes the shh, shh sound like he isn't holding the button down on his radio long enough for his radio to pick up his voice. One of the maintenance guys usually calls on the radio. Hey boss, were you calling me? He'll respond, shh, shh. So I talk to the night shift worker who I'm supposed to replace. Well, he tells me that over the past two years, our beloved boss has bestowed the night position, one man, with increasing amounts of nightly, weekly, and monthly duties. Our dear boss also had the fortune of gifting increasing amounts of projects, like have a one man paint an entire fire truck with two coats of paint in one night. Maybe it would be possible to put one coat of paint on a fire truck if we didn't have six hours of regular duties on an eight hour shift. However, our boss has some strange sense of time that no one can seem to figure out. So of course, to compound the radio issue, we painted this truck in the noisy generator room to make it hard to hear the radio. Not that we know who he's calling for on the radio anyway. So then our boss gets tired of seeing both the night shift workers driving around in one golf cart. He told us that we need to split up our duties and drive two different golf carts. Now I know for a fact that when we do any regular duty X or project Y, when we both do it our time gets cut in half. Even if I'm fixing a leaky pipe, my partner can save a lot of time fetching parts and tools. I literally time the duties we do both together in a part, with my watch, and I know we accomplish the same amount of work either way. So now we both drive two golf carts to the same places at the same times. We split fixing pipes into two duties, fixing and fetching. We split inspecting fire extinguishers into two parts. I look at the height off the ground, look for rust, and he'll look to see if it's sealed and has the right pressure. In fact, every task we do has been broken down such that we work together. Then our boss wanted us to break up our coworkers' parties and employee housing. He wanted us to take pictures of anyone partying at night. He wanted us to patrol the area and look for partiers every night. Now, if you don't know, this is a great way to anger your coworkers. Angry coworkers can make your life miserable at work. So we drive by, wave kindly at the 10 people drinking beer on the deck at 2 a.m., and we often chat with them. I usually turn to my coworker in the second golf cart and ask him, hey, does this look like a party to you? He usually says nope, then we move on. If we get a noise complaint, we kindly ask the partiers to take it to the employee recreation building. When we take pictures, we smudge some dirt on our cameras and take them from too far away to identify anyone. When our boss asks about the partiers at 2 a.m., we will say, we didn't see them at midnight when we drove by. Anyway, our boss has dreamed up many ingenious ways of shooting himself in the foot, alienating and angering his workers, damaging his workers' reputations behind their back, and much more. But these are just some of the ways his workers unite to maliciously comply. I suppose upper management doesn't want to get rid of him, because few people are willing to do this job. Our boss would love to leave, but no one will hire him elsewhere. He told me this last part directly. The last story is... Don't ever touch my stuff. To start, I work at a data center regulated by a military company. We have a very strict no phone policy. Since this policy was made by the company, it basically trumps everyone's position in the office. My desk is located near my boss who has an office. When he gets in, he has meeting after meeting to go to, so it's typical for him to come in, throw his stuff down and leave for the day's meeting. The thing is, he has the annoying habit of leaving his phone on the desk, on loud, so when his alarm goes off, it blares out everything else. I'm a system administrator, so my job is to help users with their access to our systems. Part of this is calling them, and when I do, they tell me all the time that they couldn't hear me over the alarm. Our clients are all over the world, and some even deemed it disrespectful from all the background noise. One day when my boss had done his typical routine of leaving, I asked him if he could turn off his alarm. I've been getting complaints from the users. Boss, son, when you're in my position, you can do whatever you want, so shut up and do what I pay you for. 
I have no choice because I honestly don't know what to do in this situation. Anyway, he leaves and I carry on. I get a call from one of our top clients in Japan about some users having trouble accessing applications. Midway through his call, my boss's phone alarm goes off again and the user starts complaining about the call experience. I had enough and told the user to give me a few seconds so I could silence the phone alarm. Obviously, I can't get into the phone, so I press any key that usually silenced alarms. While I'm doing this, boss walks in and catches me. Boss, WTF are you doing in my office? Me, I had to. He cuts me off. Boss, get the F out and don't ever touch my stuff again, or you're fired, you contractor POS. Me, sir, our Japan clients are complaining about the background noise and call quality. Boss, you heard me. Don't touch my SH and let them complain. I'm the boss here. He also added that if anyone wanted to challenge him, try it. I'm thick-skinned, but this moment I was heated. I sat down, closed my eyes, and took a deep breath. I looked down on my desk to see a flashing light indicating someone on the phone, and I had completely forgotten about the client on the other end. I picked up the phone and turned mute off so the user could hear me again. Before the user could even speak, my boss's alarm starts going off. The user eventually hangs up from frustration. Cue malicious compliance. I got the great idea that if I could get enough users to complain about the phone, something could happen. About 80% of the calls I took had the alarm noise in the back. I went as far as to roll my chair as close to my boss's door as possible for the alarm to be as loud as possible. Users begged me to turn it off, but I told them I couldn't. I honestly wasn't trying to be a D to users, but my hands were tied and the boss wouldn't do anything. I needed to either leave or make him leave. Users kept complaining. I kept denying to touch the phone. They started submitting bad reviews for me until one day, I get an email to meet our HR rep about my performance. As we went over everything, I noted that it was my boss's phone, and that's what the users were complaining about. Oh, I mentioned I couldn't touch it either, and how he was threatening to fire me. The HR rep's jaw dropped. I don't know immediately what happened, but by the end of the day, I got another email stating that the boss didn't work there anymore, and to disable his accounts and secure his CAC, common access card. I processed this request with the biggest grin cheek to cheek. I found out later that it was the phone, not the bad language that he got fired for. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, if you get caught with your phone in a secure location, they take it and don't give it back due to the risk of compromised data. He had a brand new iPhone 11 Pro Max. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more stories like this.